Hey Dan! <laughs> hey Dan, it's everybody from Quest! Hey everyone, it's Dan Demers from Quest. Your application engineer coming back with another Dan Splainin. What are we going to talk about today? Finding the right tool for the job. Imagine you've got a hammer and nail into a board. What tool are you going to grab? Are you going to grab a screwdriver? I don't think so. Are you going to maybe grab a vice grips? Well, you might, but trust me, it's not good for the vice grips. No. Hopefully, you grab a hammer, because it's the tool that gets the job done. Same thing with your dehumidification. There's lots of ways to pull moisture out of the air. It's just some of them are better than others, and that's what we want to talk about today. Before we talk about selecting the right tool for the job, Let's talk about dehumidification and the traditional method that the HVAC industry uses to provide dehumidification to our buildings, namely large amounts of air conditioning and a lot of reheat. I want to talk about why reheat is expensive, extremely inefficient, and produces inconsistent, unpredictable results. To understand what reheat's all about, let's look at an example of a restaurant. We're going to start with a restaurant at lunchtime. When the air comes in from the outside, we run it across our air conditioning coil to cool it off. Because we need to cool it off to keep our patrons and our staff cool, but we also need to cool it off to pull the moisture out. So the air comes in, as we can see in the psychrometric chart, it flows across the psychrometric chart until we hit this line of saturation, at which point we start cooling the air off and removing moisture until we get down to the point where we've taken out all the moisture we need to. Now, since the restaurant is full of patrons, of wait staff, and people cooking, there's plenty of heat to warm that air back up to a comfortable level of 70 degrees. Everybody's happy, and everything's working great. But what happens when the noon hour rush is over, the patrons leave, the wait staff cuts back, and the kitchen shuts down? We no longer have all that heat available to us. Now, we still have to cool the air way down to this low level in order to remove the moisture, but we can only warm it back up to about 60 degrees. How do we get it back to 70 degrees? We have to add heat back in. And that is going to cost money, especially if that heat comes from an electric resistance coil, burning fuel in a furnace, or some other form where we're spending money using energy to provide heat to make up for air conditioning that we just paid for. I want to talk today about a better way of dehumidifying the air, namely using a dehumidifier. The next application we want to talk about is high temperature comfort cooling applications, such as a business, an office, manufacturing, or we'll talk specifically about supermarkets in a minute. And to illustrate this, I brought in a Quest 506, one of our larger standalone dehumidifiers. Lately, a lot of us have been dealing with, well, this pandemic. And that has emphasized the need for dehumidification, particularly of the outside air that we're bringing in in greater volumes to purge that virus from our buildings. With that outside air comes a lot more moisture, especially in the summertime when it's hot and humid. And we need to take that out. Think about our example of supermarkets, convenience stores. Why did I pick this as an example? It's the one building that all of us have been in during the last year. Everything else has been shut down. But here in that supermarket or convenience store, it's very important to maintain a dew point to prevent frost from forming on our orange juice cans or fog forming on the glass doors of our freezer section so we can see the product and find what we need to purchase. They need to deal with that humidity and they need to do so efficiently. Traditionally, What's been done? They take package air conditioning units and put them on the roof for the sole purpose of pulling air out of the space, cooling it off, and then reheating it back to comfort temperatures to reintroduce back into the space. Just like using our vice grips to hammer in a nail, it's not the right tool for the job. Let's now look at why the Quest 506 and similar standalone dehumidifiers from the Quest product lineup are the perfect tool for the job of dehumidifying your supermarket, convenience store, manufacturing space, offices, schools, and so many other applications. But th this is a little bit too big to explain. Let's take a look at uh, something a little bit smaller and see-through. Like, here's the perfect unit to explain. 
It's a cutaway of one of our small dehumidifiers. Much simpler to look at than the Quest 506 and its multi-coil design. So here comes the air from the space. It comes into the unit, across our evaporator, that nice cold surface that's gonna pull the water out. That water drains away and it's gone. But we're not done with that air and we're not done with the heat that we pulled out with the evaporator. This compressor is gonna take that heat and recycle it back into our condenser where it's gonna heat that air back up. So the air coming out is drier than it started and a little bit warmer. Perfect for the conditions we need for our supermarket, our convenience store, or any other application that needs a lot of dehumidification. How much more efficient is the Quest 506 dehumidifier at doing dehumidification than a piece of air conditioning equipment with a little bit of reheat? Let's take a look at this graphic. At 70 degrees, 50% relative humidity, the typical conditions experienced by most grocery stores, the Quest 506 is approaching six pints per kilowatt hour. Look at this data on a couple of rooftop units with reheat. These units are using two to five times or more energy to do the same job. They're not the right tool for the job. In the case of the rooftops on this chart, they're also using recycled heat from the compressor. Imagine how worse the efficiency would be if they were also producing heat using electric resistance coil or burning some fuel. You can quickly see that the cost and inefficiency of using reheat goes up rapidly. Why not use the right tool for the job? If you need to dehumidify, use a dehumidifier. Thanks for watching another Dan Splaining episode. So whether you're an engineer, a contractor, or a business owner, if you need to control the relative humidity in your space, whether it's a supermarket, any space, use the right tool for the job. Use a dehumidifier to dehumidify that space. The cost of using reheat is just too much. And if you need help justifying that economic answer, that's what we're here for. Call Quest, ask for Dan, the dehumidification man. I'm here to help. <laughs>